Hello? Hiya, can people hear me okay? Hiya everyone, so um, today's session is going to be about lino printing um, and it's using materials from SD, which is this company here, as well as materials from Art Gecko, and I've used their sketchbook to plan my designs in. So the first thing um, I want to do is kind of introduce myself. So. Um, I'm an illustrator and I'm based in Leeds. I went to Leeds Arts University and um, whilst at university I spent a lot of time in the print room um, doing quite a lot of line of printing, experimenting with other kinds of printmaking and now I work um, as an illustrator doing things like murals, um, selling my work in my online store um, and liner print and doing sessions like this. Um, and liner printing is something that I've really um, enjoyed keeping hold of in my practice um, because it's quite a tangible, traditional kind of craft making method, which um, is really enjoyable. So um, what I'm gonna do first is talk about um, designing a lino print. So I'll show you a bit through my sketchbook. So what I did when I was first beginning um, to think about what I wanted to design for a liner print was um, I drew out lots of different sketches of um, plant life, flora and fauna that would be around at this time of year and at Easter because the whole theme of this workshop series that Art Gecko are doing is gifting art, not eggs. So um, what I'm kind of focusing on today is printing cards and I wanted to design like a nice Easter card. So these are some of the initial sketches I did here. You can see like different kinds of flowers. And then I started thinking about translating them into like pure black and white and thicker lines. And that's really important when you're thinking about what you're designing for a lino print. Um, because it's kind of important to think about how it will physically be cut out. Um, because to show you an example, I'll just get one. A lino print will look something like this. So I'll show you the reverse of that now, which will give you an idea about drawing up your design. So you can see everything that's carved away disappears and everything that's kind of on the top prints. So it's really important when you're designing to think about working kind of two colours initially. Um, so this session um, is quite short, it's only an hour long, so it will go quite quickly. Um, so if, if you kind of do miss anything or want to go back, this session will stay up on Art Gecko's YouTube channel, so you can always go back to it um, if, for example, you haven't finished carving your design when we're doing printing, you can always just continue and come back to it later. Um, and in the same vein, there's just an option for you to pop in any questions um, or anything that you want to ask um, while I go through. But yeah, if you do kind of um, feel like things are going too quickly, then just remember you can always go back and watch this at your own pace later. So a bit more on my sketchbook. This is me thinking about um, my design again, thinking about two colours and kind of simple shapes. Um, you can't really kind of achieve really crisp, um, or it's hard to achieve really crisp, really straight lines with lino print as a method. Um, so I find that actually plant shapes and kind of leaf shapes, flower shapes are really well suited to this printing method because um, you kind of have the opportunity to like go a bit off piece, like go a bit wobbly and wonky and it doesn't really matter too much. I think it kind of 
adds to it a little bit. So you can see here, like all my leaves aren't really the same shape and things look a bit organic. So I think when you're thinking about a design, um, deciding on something that looks a bit more organic can often suit this kind of printing style. So while I am kind of talking you through um, designing, then you can be going on ahead with drawing out in your sketchbook what you might want to print. Um, you can just do that while I'm talking, while I'm showing you some of my designs. So what I'm gonna carve today um, is gonna be like a little Easter egg. And these were like some of my ideas for what I might put inside it. Um, some of them a little bit more complicated than others. Some of my other ideas. Obviously this one's a bit more complex. And then I ended up deciding I wanted to do kind of a surround in one colour of some little um, kind of Easter shapes. And then I'm going to carve this egg and print it in another colour. So to kind of give you an idea of how this design translated to Lino, I've carved that part of it first. So here's this design. And we'll be showing you obviously how to carve that. And then that's it printed. So you can see when I was kind of thinking generally about what I was doing, um, I was thinking about which parts might be dark, which parts might be lighter. Now, if it is your first time kind of um, designing a lino print, you might want to go for something super simple. That's absolutely fine. Um, but that's what I went for. And you can kind of see I've tested, tested bits of it in my sketchbook here. So I'm going to, while you're kind of drawing and thinking about what you're going to do, um, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the history of lino printing. Um, just in the background while you're kind of figuring things out. Um, so I'm going to give you about like 10 minutes um, to finish off figuring out what you want to draw. You might have come to the session with a plan already. So you might kind of be um, honing out any bits of your design. Um, but yeah, while you're doing that, I'm just going to chat to you a little bit about the history of lino printing. Because I think that's quite interesting to know a bit of background to the technique you're going to be learning and using. So lino printing is a form of relief printing where part of the surface is cut away, like I showed you here, part is cut away and what remains is covered with ink and then printed onto paper to create a lino print. So lino comes from lin linoleum, which is a floor covering um, and that dates back to the 1860s. It was invented by Frederick Walton in the UK. Um, for our sessions, we're actually using easy cut lino, which is quite bendy, like this, much easier to cut. Um, but the first lino was a lot harder. So this is an example of, see, it's a lot less bendy. It's a bit harder to cut. So the first lino people would have been using would have been a bit different to what we'll be using today, which is easy cut. Now, some of you might have brought traditional lino along I'm not sure, but most of you will probably be using easy cut. Um, so some of the first recorded uses of lino printing are from the artists of Die Brook in Germany between 1905 and 1913. However, it's kind of unclear when the first uses of lino as an art medium began, although it will have been some time at the turn of the century. So lino works in a similar method to woodcut printing, if you've ever come across that. It's likely that the method originated from woodcut printing and was kind of inspired by that, with woodcut makers experimenting with new materials. And early use of lino printing included book covers, posters, wallpaper designs. One of the most famous institutions to adopt lino printing was the Grosvenor School of Modern Art in the 1920s and 30s, um, which was a private British art school in the UK, founded in 1925 and it had um, a focus on printmaking and modern techniques. So some examples of other famous artists who've used this technique are Pablo Picasso. So this is a really lovely example of a black and white Picasso line of print that I've just printed off to show you. So when I explain the tools, I'll bring this up again and kind of explain how 
tools have been used to kind of carve away different areas and give these lovely, lovely effects. Um, another artist who used liner print was William Rice, Sybil Andrews and Henry Matisse. So this is a lovely example of a Matisse. That's a really simple liner cut, but really effective. And then a modern artist I wanted to show you that quite a lot of you may have heard of is Angie Lewin. So she uses a mix of printing methods. She does use woodcuts um, as well as liner cuts. So this is a gorgeous example of one of hers. You see the nice texture in that, how it's been printed. So you can see when you're thinking about your design that you're kind of focusing on something quite bold, something with quite bold shapes, bold strokes. That's kind of work, what works best, something quite shapy. Um, yeah, so I kind of, like I say, kind of gone for this natural subject matter. So don't worry if you're not quite finished drawing, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move on to showing you how to kind of translate your design to a piece of lino. And then we'll talk about the tools and about cutting or carving, I should probably say. Right, I'm just going to get a few different bits out. So, as I said before, there's different kinds of lino. This is the one I generally go for. It's kind of uh, dark coloured and it's smooth on both sides. So if you're a bit of a cheapskate, you can carve both sides. Um, and use it twice, as long as you don't go too deep. So that's a little example of one I've done before. Again, I think it's really helpful to show you examples of the printing block and the print itself to give you an idea of how designs translate. So I'm just gonna do that now. So everything's back to front. So when you're designing, when you're carving, if you're doing words, it's gonna turn up um, back to front. So a design like this here for me, probably took about an hour to carve, potentially an hour and a half. Um, something like this here, this took me about an hour. It's quite um, a time, it's quite a timey process, quite a long process, but I actually think that's really nice with a craft um, because it means you get really involved. Something like this, where you've got all these little details that have kind of gone round, that probably took me three hours. Um, but yeah, this one probably took about an hour and a half. So here you can see where I've just carved away like little lines, it's just printed white like this. And I've actually cut around that to save time rather than carving out all the background. However, when you do leave the background in, you do get these kind of like nice lino effects here, which are nice. So this is the kind of lino I usually use. Um, but I tried this one out from SD today, um, which is kind of like a pale colour. And I cut a piece to use to put my drawing on today. Now, the good thing about this is it's quite easy to kind of draw your design onto. So I'm just going to pick up my piece of lino now. So this is a bit I've got. The other good thing about this kind of lino is um, it's really easy to cut. So think about how big I want my egg to be. I'm just gonna cut a square out like this with scissors. Please excuse my like paint covered <laughs> clothes. There we go. So I'm only gonna be carving a little one today. Um, I would probably recommend you carving something quite simple to start with today as well. So what I'm going to do first is I like to use a biro to kind of sketch my design out onto here. You can use a pencil if you want. Um, but I find that a biro works quite well because it doesn't really smudge too much. So I'm just going to draw out my egg shape. 
I'm going freehand here. Um, you could potentially, if you've got a design drawn out, you could use tracing paper in the same way you, that you transfer drawings to um, normal paper with tracing paper. You can do the same with lino. But I'm just going freehand for this. So the design I decided to go for out of my book was this one with kind of the big, nice plant shapes. So I'm just going to... You don't have to be kind of perfect with this because I think you'll find when you start carving things, it won't be quite perfect how you carve them either. If that makes sense. So yeah, I'm just going to go for really simple, just something like that. Now, if it makes it easier, you could colour in um, the areas that you want to stay and the areas that you want to cut out. That can be helpful. Some people do tend to do that. Um, so what I want to stay today is um, like all of this egg. I'm going to cut out everything around it and I'm going to cut out these bits of plants. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to colour in black what I want to get rid of to help me out. And, you know, don't worry too much if this is like your first time using Lino about getting it perfect because um, it doesn't have to be perfect on your first try. I think with something like this, it takes quite a lot of time to do. It's quite nice just to enjoy the process. I think really enjoying the process is quite important. And I find it quite a meditative process because it's um, kind of long-winded and you're kind of focused and it's quite repetitive. I think this is actually a really nice thing because your mind kind of focuses on what you're doing and moves you away from thinking in my personal experience. So I want to get rid of all of that. Right. So there you go. I've roughly coloured in um, what I want to get rid of. Now, before I go ahead and cut all of that out, I'm going to actually explain the cutting tools to you that I've got with me today. Um, and I just got a really lovely comment from Sal saying the process is how you connect with your work. And I totally agree. Um, when something's quite labour intensive, I think um, you have a stronger connection to it. And that's what's lovely about traditional craft. Although, strictly speaking, as I said earlier, this is quite a modern technique. So this is the first thing I've got. A lot of you might not have one of these, but what it is, is a hand guard. So if you put it here when you're carving, you kind of, say it wasn't here and I was carving with the blade, I might like kind of sit and go towards my fingers. This just protects your fingers. Um, it can be a bit unwieldy to get used to. So please forgive me if I kind of occasionally forget about it, and don't use it. Um, but that's what that is. And it's really helpful when you're working with younger children as well, actually. But generally, one thing I always say, whether you, if you don't have a hand guard, which you probably won't, is just when you're cutting, don't kind of cut towards your hands. Because if you're putting a lot of pressure and you slip, then um, it's, not, it's not the most enjoyable experience. So what I'm going to show you is the tools, and this will make some stuff make a bit more sense. This is a lovely little tool holder from SD, it's really cute, keeps everything kind of organized. So how I put the blades in here is I've got this metal tip, wait for it to focus, and then I screw it on like this, not all the way down. And then there's different kinds of blades to choose from. So the most important thing with liner cutting tools is not which ones are the most expensive, but actually just keeping the ones you have sharp, that's more important than how much they initially cost. So you can sharpen your tools, you can send them away to get sharpened if they're getting a bit blunt. Depending on how much line of cutting you do, you probably won't need to sharpen them very often. So I think what I'm going to show you is kind of what they look like. So they all have like different ends. Sorry about the focus here. Um, and 
this one number they all have numbers on as well try and get that to so that one there is number one and they kind of go up and they do different things so for me personally don't never figured out how to use that one so i ne never use that one most sets will come with five or six of these standard blades so if it's got a bit of a wider groove it'll cut a wider line so this is a little test sheet for you so this one's got a really wide groove that when you're carving would create a line like that this is another one that i personally don't use very often but this is what it looked like like this this stops you from kind of going off track a bit um but i think it gives you a little bit less freedom of movement so i don't usually go for that one this one here which is the thinnest one again it would look like this so you can see the difference between that one i just showed just a bit more straight this one has a bit more variation in line i quite like that for things looking organic so i'm probably going to use that one today i'm not going to use this really thick one because i've got a small print but it can be good for getting rid of large areas of lino then i've got this one here which would look similar to that one probably a bit more like this a bit thicker and then this one here is number three uh, i like number three that's that one so Different blades have different thicknesses. That's kind of what that's showing. It's a bit dark, so it's a bit hard to see, but that's that's a block of lino. That's where the blade's carved out. That's how it's printed. So you can see finer lines. So to start with, I'm gonna start with number one. That's it. Number one is the one that gives you probably the thinnest line. So I've got my tool. There we go. Um, it's kind of got this opening here, and you just fit that in there. So you got the blade at the top, and then you tighten it like that. When you're carving a piece of lino, you kind of almost want to skim the surface. You don't really want to go like this at an angle and go really deep. Because then you go too deep, you get stuck, and then you go Ugh! right into your hand or right through your work. It's really annoying. So you almost want to be skimming the surface. If you have some lino, like any scraps or any spare, like this is one of my scraps, always save them, I really recommend just trying it out. So that's me skimming the surface there. That's a really thin line. Just skimming the surface. So I'd recommend if you have a spare, have a go with one of your blades, see how you feel, see what works best for you, see where you're getting stuck and just get a feel for it before you begin. That's really helpful. So while you're doing that, I'm gonna start carving this here. So again, I'm just kind of skimming the surface. This white liner was really easy to cut you don't really need much pressure. So the bits of liner will come away and they'll look like that. And it does get a bit messy. I might have to hoover afterwards. Um, and it's quite hard to see on this lino, but can you see there that groove? So these are like, this is why the handguard is important. These are sharp little tools and they kind of carve away like this so just kind of skim the surface right i'm gonna i'm just gonna get on with this for a bit while you get on with uh, what you're doing feels a bit weird not if you've been able to see what i look like and <laughs> uh, maybe i'll switch the camera around at the end to say goodbye so i've been playing with lino for a couple of years I think um, you can get really successful products on your first try. I think it's um, it can be quite easy to grasp, especially if you get on with it. But it takes practice to kind of get where you want to be. 
I'd say start off simple if you can. So I'm going to do a little printing session as well. I'm going to use quite a few different kinds of paper to show you what I'm doing. But some of the paper I'll be using today is from my Art Ghetto sketchbook, quite a thick paper. It can be helpful to use um, a thinner paper as well, can pick up quite a lot of ink. But any, any paper really will work when you're printing lino, apart from something that's really textured. If something's really, really textured, then I find it can be a little bit harder to pick up detail. Sorry, I'm not a tech whiz. I realise I'm slightly out of focus. Um, I'm not sure what I've done there. There we go, perfect. Just need to put my hand in there. So when you're carving, you can kind of turn the line around. So say I'm coming around the curve of this egg here. I might actually turn the liner while I've got the blade there to get a smoother curve. So that's kind of gone around there. As I say, it's a bit harder to see what you're doing with the white lino, a little bit harder. And can you see I'm carving away from my fingers? I'm not carving this way. I'm always trying to carve away from my fingers. It's quite important. So don't worry about going too fast. There's no rush. You can always come back to certain steps. You might still be carving when um, we're printing. That's okay because you can always watch rewatch the printing later. Because it is quite a lengthy process, and if you're new to it, pop a comment. Any comments? in the chat if you want to, or just if you want to say how it's going. So I often, you can see me there, I often, um, if I'm getting little bits of liner kind of stuck in this tool, I'll just pull them out. You can see me, I'm being naughty and not using the hand guard. <laughs> it's because it's quite a small piece though. Hand guards can be a, a bit faffy sometimes when you're carving something small. So if you've got um, traditional lino, which is a bit harder, and you're struggling to cut it, you put it on the radiator for a couple of minutes and that really helps to kind of soften it up, makes it easier to cut. Traditional lino is better for getting small details because because it's harder to cut, you have a bit more control. I would recommend it for that. But I almost always use easy cut lino. Right, so just gonna switch switch these heads out I'm gonna I think I'm gonna go for number two I'm just gonna have a look no I think I'll go number three so again I'm just twisting this top here and then it just pulls out put the bottom in there making it secure this one has a thicker end and it's so I can get rid of these bits here around the egg. So I think this is always something nice sometimes to have music on in the background or something to listen to. What I find with 
um, these deeper tools is it can be a bit easier to kind of get stuck and go too deep and then kind of find it hard to carve. Remember what I said about skimming the surface. So all of these materials here have been provided for this workshop by SD. So that's E-S-S-D-E-E. -S -S -E -E. They have loads of liner printing materials at affordable prices. And that's one thing about liner printing. There are some really expensive tools out there. I personally actually use SD all the time. Use them um, when I was at college as well. And I think they're, they're great. They definitely do the job for me. Might be different if it was, you know, your only art form or your only practice. But yeah, we'll recommend them as a cost effective option. And you can get a whole set and whole kit with everything you need. So that's been provided by these, all the sketchbooks I've worked in, the paper that you're going to see later that I'm printing on. That's all going to be Art Gecko. Who do the nicest sketchbooks? Really good for designing stuff. So, I'm just gonna get the focus. You can see here, I've carved away the outside of this bit of the egg, carved that away. This still needs to be carved off. That still needs, but I've carved all that away. So, I've used that thicker one to get rid of more ground more quickly there. So, I'm just gonna continue carving this along with the rest of you. So a lot of artists use liner prints. If you have a look at um, Picasso, he's got some really gorgeous liner prints and he's got some that use multiple colours, which is not something I'm really going to go into today because of the time, time limit, but I am going to show you a little bit about designing for more than one colour, a little bit. Now, just to show you here, we're all human. What I've done here, just there, wait for it to, is I've just slipped and I've just taken a bit out here <laughs> that I didn't want to. And you'll see later when we ink this up, that'll show up. But I've just gone too fast and I've just slipped a bit, taken a bit out. It happens. Don't worry about it too much. You know, if you're doing something you're really focusing on, then yeah, it's unlikely to happen and it can be quite annoying. But it's all part of the printing process. I think printing is really enjoyable because with the exception of screen printing and even then, I feel like no two prints are the same, no two results are the same. And I like the experimental nature of printmaking. I really like that with mono printing, lino printing. And I think that's something you actually kind of need to embrace. Now, of course, there's good technique, and we'll talk about this later. Good technique when you're printing lino. But I think you kind of have to embrace the imperfections as well, because that's kind of what part of what makes it what it is, and not just like a digital drawing. So I think it's important to think about stuff like that. Right, you see all my little bit kind of building up there? going to keep carving that away there. So sometimes I do change direction to get rid of certain bits. But yeah, liner is very popular now. I see it used for quite a lot of things. I'm reading a lovely book at the moment called Silence of the Girls and the uh, front covers a liner print. Got another lovely one called the Forager's Calendar. You know what? <sighs> Just finished getting rid of all the outside there. While you're all carving away, I'm going to go get that book and show you. Right, 
this is a well complicated example of a line of print but shows you what you can achieve so this is a gorgeous book and this is like a few different colors of line of prints see there someone's used a tool and they've gone one way then the other way to make that lovely kind of cross hatching effect there which thinks really nice you can see how it's quite bold that's something with line of print you're always going to get quite a bold print due to the nature of the way that it's being created so yeah that's what can happen you use different colors see how the tool's been used to do cross hatching there it's similar to this picasso so he's used the tool to kind of cross hatch and i think that's actually really creates really nice effect you might what you might be doing today you might not even be doing the sign you might just be doing a little test piece so you can have a go just creating different textures but a couple of other bits in it's a lovely card from oxfam that I have that's that's a line of print see around the edges here you've got these kind of imperfections where things haven't been kind of completely carved away but i think that's really lovely really adds to it so that's a lovely card and i brought one more thing in here just like a 3d cat so that's a couple of colors of liner print you can you can see that technique the way that the blade creates a certain aesthetic that you recognize as a liner print you can see it here see it here that's a really nice example right i'm going to finish off carving this and then we'll talk about printing so i'm gonna change my nib back to number one for the little detail and i'll stop gobbing on <laughs> and uh, focus on what i'm doing So what's really nice about liner prints is you can make quite a few out of your plate. It's not like a mono print where you can only do one one of each. So it's a really good idea if you're wanting to send loads of cards out to people. Because you could print like easily print a good 50. I think with the easy cut, it'll probably last around before it starts to deteriorate at all, I reckon it could last a good 200 prints. Probably a fair bit more but yeah it's good for making kind of um, multiples so see I'm turning the line over there as I went around that petal shape Hopefully, you'll be able to share with them, um, Art Gecko, what you've created in this, because I'd love to see what people have come up with. Because I'm used to um, doing a session in person, kind of seeing how people are going, giving them tips, seeing what they're doing. So it's quite funny. This is my first time doing a live session online. So it's quite funny not being able to see everyone who's watching along, seeing what they're all doing. So hopefully I can see some of it afterwards, that'll be lovely. So uh, Art Gecko tagged me, not tagged me, um, 
on most of their posts about this workshop. So if you do have any questions post workshop as you get into all the stuff about liner printing, then you can just message me on my Instagram account and I'll be happy to help. Right, so we're 40, 41 minutes through, so I'm going to spend about five more minutes carving this before talk about printing. And remember, like I said earlier, if you're not finished, just carry on. That's fine. You might carry on well past the session and um, come back to the live stream later once it's saved to see about printing so don't rush i'm being a bit quick so i've made a couple of mistakes but this is just my example to show you And remember, if you're getting stuck, if your blade's kind of getting stuck in the lino, think about just gliding across that surface, think about the angle that your hand is at. On to my last little bit here. See all the little bits of the liner building up. I mean, if you are interested about the environmental impact, then a woodcut would be more environmentally friendly. Probably last a bit longer for printing as well. But woodcutting, although follows the same principles is a fair bit harder to kind of create in practice so liner printing is a good starting point i've not really done a woodcut i'd quite like to go on a course one day but they create quite a similar aesthetic the process is just a little bit trickier but yeah woodcuts are a bit better for the environment Oh, sorry, I'm moving my bit of liner all over the place. Speaking of the environment, the sketchbook I've got from Art Gecko, really good thing about them, is 100% recycled, which is lovely. And um, you're not really paying it any more for that, but much better for the environment, especially the amount of paper I can imagine a lot of you go through with your sketchbook. Right, so I'm almost done cutting my last bit there. So sometimes when you ink up to print, you'll often find there's bits you've missed carving out. So what some people do, there's my little little egg. What some people do is they um, kind of run over it in graphite see see what the print's going to look like i'm going to go straight through to the printing because we only have about 15 20 minutes left and i'm going to talk you through the printing process fairly quickly so what i'm going to do first i'm going to move move all this stuff out of the way i'm going to put my tools away first Da, da, da. Look how handy that is. It's great. Right, making way, making way. Ugh. For inking. So 
so I've got whoop, this little tray here little tray you can roll ink out on any flat surface this is what I used to use which is a piece of glass well not sharp obviously um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna roll out on this tray today that is in the set that was in one of the sets from SD this is your roller here you can get lots of different sizes it's quite a big one actually for that quite big but you can get a couple of different sizes they're just you know standard roller not too difficult to use and then ink um you get loads of different colors these are really fun i'm not going to use these today but these are metallic inks they look really cool not quite for my aesthetic and i imagine this um silver here if you're doing the moon that could look really good then we've got a couple of other colors got the primary colors white and black you can mix these inks you can just mix them just like you would with acrylic paint so that's quite helpful so when printing two options water-based block printing ink which i'm going to use today because that's that's in the materials we've been given for this workshop the other option is now this is looks a bit old doesn't it oil based i think you get a slightly better print with that but it's a much harder to clean because it's oil based so yeah much more tricky to clean but i think you get a slightly better print with that because this one dries out a bit quicker however i will be using this today the water base this is a bit cheaper as well that's with the oil base there got quite a clean print um well i'm gonna have a go with the water base now and i'm going to show you about rolling it out so i just put like a z not really a blob about that much like a nice coating you can always add more but you can't take away that's important don't don't start with too much because you can't take it away if you need more you can always add more so with the roller instead of going like this where you're only actually covering one one short surface kind of go down pull down that's satisfying and then go up and then you can go different directions Now, if you listen to this, sounds a bit like Velcro. What you kind of want to be looking for when you're rolling out your ink is the kind of that Velcro sound. That's the right sound. There's potentially a little, little bit too much ink here, potentially, but we'll have a look. I'm just going to get my paper out gonna pull some out of my book I think from my art gecko right, I'm gonna use brown this is almost like card this is like brown here to show you so once I got that rolled out come on there just roll over the design and you can basically see bit like what it's going to print so I'm just rolling over the design you can see here there are bits that have been caught up that haven't been quite carved away but I think that adds to it and what I'm going to do got a bit of water here I think for the first try I'm going to put the block down on the paper rather than the paper on the block so for this one I'm just going to press it down sorry you can see me wobbling table wobbling I'm just pressing that down with my hand you can you, there are lino presses but you wouldn't have one in your own house you might have one at uni 
unless you have like 300 quid spare don't think you'd have one in your own house but i saw someone using a chapati press once and that was genius you could even stand on it if you want so I lift that away and i've got like a little bit so you can see here that's kind of where bits haven't been carved away and it's moved around a bit so that's not that's not an ideal print that's not quite what i'm looking for so I'm going to have another go, but I'm going to press the paper onto the print, like that, just here. And then, let me have a look for my spoon. You can use a spoon to put pressure on. And that's a much nicer print actually kind of what i'm looking for see here it's kind of um moved there and bled whereas here you've got a little bit more of a need to print we've got bits of texture here i like that that's what makes a liner print a liner print so got this here I think I'm gonna ink this up a different color and then print this on top I'm gonna to show you an example of what that can look like so I've got this same background but I carved a little rabbit a uh, rabbit a hair I carved a little hair and printed it like this for some um, Easter cards or equinox really so I've used two colours. It's quite nice on the brown with the white. I think brown's really nice for you, black and white, and it's quite a neutral colour palette. I think I prefer that one. That one. It's got a bit more texture in that as well. So I think I'm going to roll out some white for this one now for you and uh, do that on some brown paper. So I've got my other one. And um, today, I, like I say, with the time, I carved one of these beforehand. That's why I have time to do two colours. But I imagine you'll only be doing one colour today, time-wise. But this is just to show you the options, possibilities. So I'm going to get another roller. I do have one. I'm just going to have a look for it. Tell you what you don't want to see my table behind the camera because things just go have a life of their own so i'm going to wash this one off really quickly and print the white out for you This is the really good thing about water-based inks is you can wash them really fast and dry them off. But if I was doing two colours, I'd usually have two rollers. So I'm just going to roll this white out. Going to add a bit more white. You know what? funny about this white it proper smells like pseudocreme really unusual don't know what the uh, ingredient that connects the two is but it smells just like pseudocreme can you hear that noise it's kind of what you're looking for that lovely velcro like noise i'm going to put that to the side quickly i'm going to ink this up with white
might need to roll over a couple of times. Ink that up. Do, 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 do. And what I'm going to use this time is a greetings card. Oh, <laughs> not that one. It's got something on it already. Right. So open the letter that way. That's the one you'd want to be printing on. So this is card. I do find with liner prints, if you're using paper, it can be a bit easier because um, you can get a bit more like pressure onto the print, but card is definitely possible. So that's what I'm using right now. I'm gonna put a little bit more ink on that. As I say, it doesn't matter if it's perfect. First print usually isn't, but that's not really for me what it's all about. And you just need to experiment a bit. So I'm using a spoon there. You can print on any kind of paper. You could try tracing paper. You could try you could try anything. Some things might not work for you, some things might. But that's all the fun of it, really. Experimenting. That's printed quite nice. See the details there. I've lost a little bit of detail here in the lines. I think that's slightly because it's a water-based ink and um, that's just because I've got a little bit too much on there and the detail's quite fine. So, I'm gonna wash my roller and ink up this one in black. Because we're coming towards the end. As we are coming not long to the end, if anyone's got any questions, Pop them in. There we go. Lovely noise. It's when you know you've got it right. So, it's going to... Printing at home will always be different to printing in a print studio. In a print studio, you'll have oil-based inks and you'll have a lino press, which will exert an equal amount of strong pressure. And um, you'll always get slightly better result in that sense. But I think you can still do really effective things printing at home. So for this one here, I'm just laying it on the top so I kind of get the positioning a bit better. I'm just pressing down. Right, fingers crossed. There we go. So we've got that kind of two colour print there. It's quite nice. I think in hindsight, I'd probably do the egg white and the flower detail black. But you just need to have a go and then you can decide those things for yourself, can't you? So, here we go. This is quite a thin piece of paper. I'll, um, I'm going to ink up the hair as one last example for you all. Do, 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 do. So, you don't want too much ink on there, you just want so it's black, so you can see that it's black. Because it's water-based as well, you don't want to leave it too long before you actually print it, because if you do, it'll dry. I'm just using the back of this, because this is just a scrap print, so I'm going to... There's my hair. I'm going to go on top of that. And rub it with my spoon. You can get like a little uh, liner presser, which are a bit better. But spoon's fine for me. There we go. Lovely. I love the texture in that, actually. 
that is personal preference. You might not want texture, you might want a proper solid little print. I like the texture in that. So, what's what the reason that texture is there is there's not quite enough pressure in that area because I was quite quick there. If you had a lino press, you wouldn't get that. So, that was a bit of a whistle stop tour, to be honest. But that's my, um, look at the mess I've made there. That's my introduction to kind of lino printing. Um, I hope that's helped. I hope that's um, given people some things they didn't already know, really. Um, it's quite informal, but I um, hope you enjoyed it. And I want to say thank you to um, SD. So I'm going to put them in shot again for pro providing all the materials for this workshop really affordable and obviously to art gecko for hosting this and just being fab and for this great campaign idea and for giving me loads of um sketchbooks and materials as well and um, but i hope that was helpful and i hope you enjoyed it and um yeah if you're still carving good luck um i'd love to see what you get up to you can always come back and watch this later Oh, one last thing. Once you've printed them, they probably take about... With the water-based ink, I'd give them maybe an hour to dry before you touch them. So, back to... Do -do -do, back to this page. That's my um, Instagram there. If you've got any questions. Um, oh, thanks, Sal. You're very welcome. If you've got any questions... Oh, thanks, Amelia, as well. Oh, this is lovely. Um, then, yeah, you can just pop on my Instagram. I'm tagged on Art Gecko, so you don't need to remember. Um, but thanks so much for listening to me ramble on and showing you a bit of uh, printing. Um, I'm just going to... Do, do, do. That's me. <laughs> so, bye, everyone.